good morning my process serving peeps out there so today's video we are going to be talking about something that's come up several times to me already and that is how to deal with confrontation do we deal with confrontation on a regular basis you bet we do that's pretty much all we deal with i mean you get a lot of passive people that you serve papers to and they they just take it they go on with life but you will get a lot of people who get very upset with you more upset than what they get at the mailman for bringing them their bills right because you are there in some cases you're humiliating them um, you're doing it in front of their family their friends or co-workers so yes we deal with confrontation pretty much every day like every I can't think of a single day that I didn't have at least one person try to get up in my face about serving them paper so that's gonna be the topic for today Well, as you see, I have made it to what's probably the least confrontational place anywhere around here. And that's in the middle of f***ing nowhere. We are at the top of a mountain, which is exactly what I set out to find. And yeah, this is where I think today's video is going to happen. Okay, so confrontation. I mean, it's kind of expected in this line of work. You're going to someone's house, you're handing them something that they may have known was coming, but they didn't know it was coming this morning, they didn't know this is what they were gonna wake up to. So naturally, as anybody probably would be, they're going to get mildly upset, at least. It's something you just don't need to deal with. So, and not only that, we wanna keep it as professional as we can possibly keep it, because, you know, we're representing our business, we're representing those who we're serving for, so it's important that we keep our confrontation to a minimal. Um, and then on top of that, you don't want to get in a fight with somebody. No matter who they are, anything, you just don't want to start fighting with somebody. There's only been a handful of times where I felt like a service was going to turn into a fist fight. And I just got out of there. I mean, I'm not there to prove anything to anybody or prove how tough I am. I just got the hell out of there because the last thing I need to do is get into some physical altercation with somebody over something that doesn't really involve me at all. Our number one goal should be to limit the confrontation. Keep it as minimal as possible. Isn't it freaking awesome to get out of the office once in a while? go somewhere that's a little bit easier going from time to time so for example um, I had an incident where I served somebody some paperwork they got very upset with me they threw the paperwork at me and they were squaring off like they wanted to fight me um, no that makes zero sense at all but that's what happened so instead of instead of trying to show that I was right and they were wrong and square them back what did I do I just walked away I mean you got to keep a watch over your shoulder even walk backwards keep an eye on them just to make sure you keep plenty of distance between you and them and just get out of there because at the end of the day I did what I was paid to do the person who needed to be served got served and everybody went on their way happy. I'm sure they cooled down. I don't really care if they did or didn't. But at the end of the day, I got the job done. I was efficient. I didn't cause any kind of additional problems. And I just got out of there after I completed what I needed to do. These small percentage of people will try to bait you into that fight to sh so they can show you who's boss, right? And you need to be the professional and you just need to step out of the situation. You did your job and get going. All right, something else I'd like to talk about is how to derail a confrontation before it ever even begins. That's the ideal situation, really, is if you can derail that with a little bit of what we call verbal judo before it begins, you can avoid the whole confrontation itself right off the bat. And I don't typically do this method unless I can right out of the gate see that this person's going to be aggressive towards me or, you know. But once I see that, I'll employ some of these tactics. So oftentimes, instead of coming down with that authoritative, you know, is that a word? Authori authoritative? Authority? You know, without approaching the situation as though I'm looking down on them and I'm authoritative and this is who I am and, and this is what I have for you. Instead of coming at them with that attitude and that demeanor, I'll take a totally different approach and give them the feeling like, hey, I I'm a nobody, but 
I've got something for you. It's it's going to come across totally different and they're they're naturally going to react totally different to you because of it. So if you come at them, hey, you know, yeah, I, my name's Brett. I'm a process server. I've got some paperwork. I don't know much about it. I know that it's a court summons. You know, I, appar apparently you got to square up with these guys. I'm not really sure. You know, get the information across and at the same time kind of play dumb. Like, I don't know anything about anything. I'm just the delivery guy. They may want to be mad at you, but they'll subconsciously react to that in a much more pleasant way than if you were to come at them as though you're looking down on them. So I like to derail that right out of the gate if I feel like that's the direction it's going. And I have to say, I've had fairly good success with that. So one thing I get asked quite a bit is if I wear a body camera uh, while I'm out serving. Um, and, I, and I don't. Uh, I did at one point, but the, the problem with that is, is you'll fill up a hard drive so fast, it's hard to even keep up with it. So I stopped doing it. But there's two reasons I can see using a body camera. One is going to be to prove the service. Um, if there's any kind of discrepancy, if you're ever challenged, you can prove it. The second one is for confrontation or being assaulted, which being assaulted is rare, yeah, but does it happen? You bet it happens. Has it happened to me? Uh, it's been close a couple times, but no, I've never actually been assaulted. So if you choose to use that body camera simply to disprove any kind of assault claims or to prove an assault that happens to you, uh, then by all means knock yourself out because that's not, you know, at the end of your serving day, if nothing happened, you can always just delete that. Or if you want to, if you have big enough drives to store it all, uh, that, that's an option. So yeah, the body cameras are nice to disprove any kind of claims against you or to prove an assault against you. Be conscious of your surroundings. If you walk in to serve somebody and you're in the middle of nowhere and there's 10 people there, maybe give it another day to go back because you don't want to put yourself in a position where you're going to have to fight. This job might pay well, but it doesn't pay that well to get in a fight every single day. Okay guys, time to answer some viewers' comments and questions. Uh, this first one's going to be from Two-Timer. He asked, if I pretend to be a salesman and tell them I'm with a company, is that legal? That's a two-part answer. As an example, if I tell you I work for Burger King, that's not a crime, I can tell you that. It doesn't, it's not a crime. What you cannot do is tell somebody you work for the government or you're a police officer, or you're a federal officer, or you're with the IRS, you can't do those things. But keep in mind, if you do that and you get them to open the door, you also make, must make sure you let them know you are a process server and you have a court summons for them. That part you can't slip on, you have to let them know that's. So two-timer, thank you for the question. Really good question, on to the next. KSO Music Videos commented, tip for helping with identity and getting into locked locations. Just say you're with DoorDash, Postmates, etc., and bring an empty food bag or buy something cheap. So getting into locked locations is always a struggle. Every time, it's usually apartment complexes, right? Oftentimes they're, they're wide open, but oftentimes they are not. And they have a locked exterior door that you have to penetrate. And if you don't have the key or the code, I mean, let's be honest here. How easy is it gonna to be to get into that place? What I typically do is I sit in my car right outside that door and I will wait. I mean, if I got time, you know, I'll, I'll put 15 minutes, 20 minutes into it. I'll sit there and wait until another you know, resident pulls up and walks in. Now, a special trick I have learned that usually helps with that to slide in behind them without them asking you questions, I pull out my phone. I pull out my phone and I talk like I'm talking to somebody so they won't interrupt me and I just follow them in and act like I'm supposed to be there. When they hold the door for you, say, hey, thanks, man. And, and head on in and just be making up a conversation. That will keep that person from asking you because a lot of them will feel like they want to ask you, do you belong here? Are you supposed to be here? But they also have that, you know, they have manners if their parents raised them right. And they don't want to interrupt you while you're on the phone. And so they just kind of shrug their shoulders and just say, oh, well. But if you weren't on the phone, they'd likely be like, hey, who are you? I don't want to let you in if you don't live here. So make sure you avoid those questions by, walking with a cell phone or anything like that. So locked locations can be very tricky, but there's also ways around them. Okay, my last comment that I'm gonna read is going to be from Isaiah Stanley. Isaiah says, hey bud, I'm looking to become a process server. Have a question, what happens if you aren't able to serve a resident their papers? Say the person that wants the papers served, so your client, pays for three attempts and you try three times, maybe even a fourth and can't get the papers served, what do you do next? Do you still get paid? Do they pay first? or pay once you're done. So, okay, Isaiah, to answer that question, um, I, I just do a flat rate. I just do a simple flat rate of $50 a service 
and that motivates me to go and try it until I get it done. Because if I spend three times serving or attempting and I never get it served, that just costs me money because I just did all that work for absolutely nothing. Now, as far as getting paid before the service happens or after the service happens, I, I always recommend doing it after. Because once again, once you've been paid, you lose a little bit of motivation to go get it done. And the last thing you're gonna wanna do is have to give the client back money because you didn't get it done. Plus you're gonna lose a client if you end up doing that, I'm quite certain. So I'd always recommend getting paid after the service um, that way they feel like they haven't put anything out. They've taken no risk by using you and, and trusting you. And after several serves, they will see that they made a good choice in hiring you to be their process server. In conclusion, if there's something you guys take away from this, I want it to be the verbal skills. That is probably paramount. You need to know how to de-escalate a situation before it turns to total shit. And trust me, if you don't know how to do that, things will turn to total shit and you need to be able to be on top of that and not allow that to happen. If you can de-escalate a situation verbally before it goes to a bad situation, you're gonna get your job done, you're gonna get back to your car, you're gonna be out of the next service and be actually working and earning money, not standing here bickering with somebody that's not worth bickering with or possibly getting in a fight with them. Also, I would like to thank today's sponsor, which is, boop, bingo, can you see that? I don't know if you can. It's servemanager.com, my sponsor every time. Serve Manager has been great for me. It's really improved my workflow, my efficiency, my time, and I can't, I can't recommend them enough. Uh, I wish something like this would have been around way back when, when, when I started, because man, my workflow could have been so much quicker, faster, easier, and, and cost less, because time is money. And with Serve Manager and the fact that you can use their program from your phone while on the road serving papers, it cuts a tremendous amount of time and it, cut, it cuts a tremendous amount of mistakes out of your back end work. All your affidavits of services, uh, your times, your locations, it proves all that, it keeps track of it all. If you click on the link in the description below, it is an affiliate link. I do get a small commission off of that, which helps me to continue making these videos and providing this information to you guys. Head over to their website. Uh, you use the link in my description below. You will get a 14 day free trial. Give it a look. If it doesn't work for you, simply cancel it, but I'm pretty sure you won't, especially those of you starting out because you don't even want to experience this gig <laughs> the way I experienced it at first. You Trust me, you want to start this with the proper software and the proper tools to do the job. Once again, guys, thanks for checking out the video. If you have any questions, comment them below. Guys, thank you. Like this video, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. We'll catch you on the next one. See ya.